In this video we'll be setting up the rest of the eye's cornea layer. Now we've already done most of the hard work for this layer in the previous part 11. So all we have to deal with in this video is the extra mesh layer and setting up the rest of the material and a couple of bones. The cornea is this second layer of mesh that protrudes from the eye and bumps outward instead of inward. It's also the layer where our fake catch lights reside, and if I angle right we can see that we've got some gloss on it. There's a lot of different ways this could be made. I'm going to show you a non-destructive way using several modifiers in order to create the second layer of geometry and flip and adjust the direction of the displacement. This is in keeping with my habit of doing things in ways that are more work up front and more complicated, but also easier to work with in the long run. Let's flip over to our new file where I've restored our original iris material since last video. Now, to get our second layer of geometry, we're going to use a solidify modifier. By default, the solidify modifier creates the new layer of geometry backwards. So we're going to change the offset so that instead it comes forward, and we're going to get rid of the fill on the rim between the new geometry. And right now it's being applied after everything else, but we actually want it before our displacements, but after that subdivision. We'll also make it much, much thinner as we don't need much space in between. Now what we can see is that in the back the displacement is going this way on positive y, and on the front layer it's going in negative y. And that's because this layer is to the left of the empty object that the displacement is projected from. But it looks a little bit weird at the edge where the mesh has curved around and isn't uh, in front of the displacement object anymore. So part of what we can do to fix that is we can flip the normals, and now we get a proper smooth transition. Then we're going to add a new empty vertex group to the model. I'll call it Cornea. And we will set our solidify modifier to output the new shell geometry to that group. So now the new geometry will have a strength of 1 in that group, and the old geometry will have a strength of 0. And lastly, we'll set the material offset by 1, so that now the new geometry will get the second material in our materials list, which is the cornea material. So that's the geometry done. Now we have the issue that it has quite a lot of displace. It has the same amount of displace forward as the iris has back, and that's probably too much. Depending on what you want it to do and look like and how much of a reflection you want, you could want this amount, but generally it'll be too visible from side angles. So we want to tone that down a bit. We want to reduce the amount of displacement. Now what we could do is make more vertex groups and limit our displace in some way, or apply the solidify and edit the vertex groups, or do a totally different pair of displace modifiers on it. But the easiest and uh, most non-destructive way is to simply modify some vertex groups. Currently, our displace modifiers are running off the I left and right vertex groups, but now I'm going to go and change that. I'm going to make some new vertex groups for the left and right, which will be displace.l and displace.r. And then I'll set the displace modifiers to use those instead. Now we'll get ourselves a vertex weight mix modifier. This is a modifier that lets you do, do things to vertex groups based on other group vertex groups. And it's basically like the mix RGB node in materials. So we're gonna get our displace left and cornea, and we're gonna change it, the mix mode to subtract. We're gonna subtract one group from the other. So right now, the cornea group has been totally wiped out of the displaced left group, and the displacement has disappeared from the cornea layer. But we don't want to remove it completely, we want to keep a little bit of it, and I think I'm going to put that to 0.85 or so, because I want to keep some curvature, extra curvature here, that will catch some gloss. And you can use, you know, whatever amount is appropriate for what you're doing. And now I will name that and I'll go ahead and do that for the right side as well. Now our cornea geometry is done and can be conveniently toggled off by just disabling the solidify. 
Now that the geometry is ready, we need to add one more bone to our rig. In the previous video, I mentioned the problem of having the catch light bones be mirrored. And that means that one catch light is on the right and one is on the left, which isn't usually how you draw them. You know, normally you have them both on the right because it's supposed to be a reflection. But if we want to keep using bone mirroring, then that's a problem. Now, of course, one way to solve this is you turn off your mirroring and you take this bone and you move it over a bit. Right. Yeah, turn off mirroring. And then you just put it here and that solves your problem until you make any other edit to your rig with mirroring enabled. And I'm not quite sure how this happens, but I just know that somehow when I'm editing my rigs and I use mirror, it ends up mirroring unmirrored bones or snapping things to some location and maybe if I pay more attention, I can get around that. But the habit I've developed is I just try to keep my rigs uh, built in a mirrored way. And that means I sometimes add extra bones for non-mirrored purposes. So in the original file, I have done this and stuck them on this extra layer. And we can see that the real mirror of this bone is this bone. But since I want this bone as well, it has a mirror here, and I've denoted the unused bones with a different shape and a different layer. So let's go ahead and make those. The difficulty here is making sure that we make our new bone the same distance from the center as this is. We want it to be over here, but exactly the same distance on X from here as this is. And getting that exact number isn't actually very easy. I'd like it if we could just somehow select this and have it tell us the x distance and of course we can select this and copy the x location and then do some subtraction and all that but um what i'm actually going to do is simply get my 3d cursor here make sure i'm in uh mirror mode copy this and now go to 3d cursor as the pivot point and do a Control m mirror on x based on the 3d cursor so that has given us our new bone. And we'll name that to catch light two, left and right. And everything else can stay the same about those, but now I will change the custom objects for the ones of these that I'm not gonna use. and move them to a new layer. I had all the catch lights on layer three, I think. Let's see. Yes, that's fine. Now we will need to complete the same process as the previous video, setting up the drivers in the cornea material for the other bone. So I've got my prop driver add-on over here. I'm gonna go and this time get catch like two R instead of the mirrored one, copy that and paste that again. And now we have quite a lot here. And then I'm gonna to have to go through and do all the spaces, uh, change this all to a local space and then make all these attribute nodes. So I'm gonna do that off screen. Here's what that all looks like set up. We've got all of our drivers and we have another copy of each side's attribute node and another eye texture offset node. And let me hide the rig layers we don't care about. We can turn that off now. And now we can do our old trick of using a mix RGB with our left right mask to put the left in the top and the right in the bottom. Now that is our texture coordinate. Now when we plug that in and render. It's working, but it's not correct. Now, why is it in the wrong place? Let's see. Let's test our bones. This one's working properly. This one is locked because I copied the locked bones. Let's make sure I keep those lined up. Don't remember why I put it on XYZ Euler. It shouldn't matter. So the up and down is right, but the X is inverted and it's over there instead of over here. So what's going on? Well, what's going on is you have to remember that we're using our object iris coordinates and those are mirrored. So if we want to fix this, we're going to have to make a slight change. Fixing the base location is easy. Let's just change that X to a negative and now it's in the right spot. And now we need to invert the X location. And let's see, 
get our 3D cursor here. How is our Y rotation? Our Y rotation is also backwards. And presumably our scale is too, but that doesn't matter because scale is symmetrical. So we could add some nodes here. We could separate this vector and add in a um, mirror, a multiply by negative one somewhere. Or we can just change this in the driver itself. Let's find our right side drivers, and the top one is the X, so in each one I'm going to go to Edit Driver, and in this case it is Object, so I'm just going to make that a minus object. And we'll do that for each of them. I don't think we really need to do it for the scale, but let's see, it seems to have worked. Now let's try it. All oh, right, on the uh, rotation, it needed to be the Y, not the X. So I'll undo that on the X and do it instead on the Y. There we go. Let's see, is that all working right? I mean, the other rotations don't matter because we're actually only using Y. I think if we rotate by Z, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't do anything if we rotate by Z. Rotating by X does do something, but that's not really something we should be doing. So I'm actually going to lock the rotations other than Y on these bones. Now that we have the right behavior, let's fix up this texture mask. We'll keep that gradient texture, and we want to turn it into a reasonable looking catch light setup. So that means ramping, that means bringing out the map range nodes as usual. And in my original file, I used a white sphere with a black outline just to have it be something that would really stand out against the eye because I wanted it to be visible for purposes of this tutorial. So I'm going to recreate that. But of course, this is the place where you should use your own artistic vision to decide what you want things to look like. I'll take an emission shader because I want this to be visible basically all the time. This is for the black outline, so it's fine if that just doesn't react to light. And a mix shader. And now we will also grab ourselves the rest of this setup. which is going to be a transparent and simply a glossy shader. Now we're nearly seeing our material, but on the material settings, we need to go into settings and set the blend mode so that alpha actually works. And now we're seeing something. All right. The wrong area is transparent because I need to invert that. Now it's transparent except where our fake catch light is, but the size is way off because we need to turn that down. Now let's adjust our shaders. I'm going to take a quick look back at the iris material and plug in its shader so it's not just shadeless emitter. And we're not getting anything because there's no lights on. So let's get that turned on. This point light is a bit dull get a little bit too strong but make it smaller so it'll be sharper a bit it's very powerful because it's very close to our eyes you have to remember our eyes are tiny and usually a point light like this would be much further away and much stronger so that's going to blow our specular out a bit at the moment. Let's see about fixing that. I'm going to turn off the cornea for a second so that we can adjust the strength of materials on the shader itself. This is another area that's going to be up to you and, you know, based on what your actual shader setup is going to be. But I'm just going to try to adjust this gloss so I get a little bit of a sheen at certain angles, but so that doesn't blow everything out. Of course, if I turn on metallic or something, things get a bit weird. That's actually pretty cool on the iris. It might be interesting to do a metallic mask just set to the iris. I'll put a pin in that. And we can get a little bit more roughness on here if we want. Maybe a bit of clear coat. That's going to make it recompile. 
There we go. Now we're getting a little bit of spot highlights at the edge of our displaced area. So I like that. I'll make them a little bit rougher and turn the intensity down quite a lot. Then I just want a little bit of a uh, sheen as I, there, as you can see a little bit of it. And we have the clear coat roughness and also we can adjust the specular here, but that'll blow it out pretty easily if we're not careful. So just a little bit of that too. Index for refraction doesn't really need to be that high. Now we'll bring back our cornea layer. And on that, we also want to adjust this gloss. We'll make it a little bit less rough, but a lot weaker by turning down the color. So now we have a good sheen. We, we are reflecting the point light, but it's not too overpowering. Now, of course, this is Eevee, and you could take this gloss and you could wrap it and, you know, make another uh, blown up catch light. And there's all sorts of options. I'll leave shaders up to you. Our corneas are now done. Let's just do a quick double check that everything is behaving properly. Oh yeah, I should turn off that subsurf. That's for render only, otherwise it will bog down the, the rig a bit. So that's working. And when we adjust the iris, it's also following along properly. And even if we do pretty radical transforms, this still remains in its relative position. And that includes if we do really crazy stuff like, you know, moving this around or whatever. It's always going to have the same relative position on the texture as this bone has on the rig. And I'll just make sure that side's working too. Oh yeah, I better lock the Y locations so that it can't be moved into somewhere troublesome. And that's that, I think. We have now finished recreating the eye setup that I originally put out, except this version is better and more optimized. The groups are better and more convenient to work with, and it's less annoying to set it all up. So if you've made it this far in this tutorial, then great job. But there is one more video to go. The next and hopefully final video, unless I think of anything I forgot, We'll be doing a quick overview of everything we've done and then showing how to fit this to a character model and attach it and integrate it into the Rigify rig. As always, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and it would be a big help if you can share any of these videos around. I'm still very small, and I don't think anybody knows this content exists. Without your help, it'll be difficult to get it out there. And of course, you can get the file and the updated complete version here that I'll be putting out once I finish that last video by subscribing to my Patreon before the end of March 2021, which is only a couple days left at this point, or it'll always be available on Gumroad. So please pick that up to support me in making more videos. Thanks, and I'll see you next video.